Well, I think uh, what really makes us say that is that uh, is twofold. First of all, David has said very clearly that he really feels he's done enough of Pink Floyd and he wants to work on his own and and maybe at a, at a slightly lower level, not not on the sort of big Pink Floyd um, big show thing. He wants to do more sort of guitar playing and something lighter, perhaps. Um, but the, also the other major factor is that uh, Rick had died five years ago. And I think, quite honestly, without Rick, it's, there's, um, it would be very difficult to, to sort of continue and do anything that we felt really represented Pink Floyd. Yes, I, that's absolutely right. Initially, it was about... Um, what should have been the second album to go with Division Bell. But it, it inevitably, I think, once we really started listening to it and working on it, 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 it changed because not only um, were there ideas that needed to be developed, they, they really were not ready to be recorded. Um, I think also just the way one feels about music changes. And so when you start reviewing it 10 years afterwards, maybe, you have a different approach or see a different, uh, a different element in the music. Um, well, the, the first thing that happened was that uh, probably two or three years after we uh, finished Division Bell, um, Andy Jackson, one of our engineers, uh, was adamant that it was, we really should have another look at this material. I think, we, uh, I think David probably be, he'd, he'd been working, he'd done his solo project, I think, uh, on an island after that. And it had, I won't say it had got forgotten, but it wasn't a priority. And I think Andy reminded us of what there was, and he did a first assembly of, of this material. Um, and it, it has taken 20 years to refine it and to uh, work out which elements should be played in, in which particular way. Yes, they did, but I don't think it matters how many other people become involved. The, the critical thing is to have the, the playing of the three of us. And as I say, so much of this album is about those early, those early sessions and the feel, the feel of us playing together. The, the retro element to this is that for many years we'd been working in, uh, in a digital world uh, where in order to get complete purity of sound, everything was overdubbed. Everyone would record separately using a click track. And um, in this instance, we sort of rediscovered perhaps the, the, the magic of, of playing together and interacting and, and jamming, really. Yes, we, I, when we recorded the division bell, we again, we, we relied on the idea of trying to spend as much time in the studio together rather than individually overdubbing everything. Uh, on the previous album, the Momentary Lapse of Reason, uh, we had used virtually all that sort of technology to, uh, as I say, to, to get perfect sound, but I think quite often by uh, working very separately and overdubbing everything. So um, Division Bell was very much a, a, the antithesis of this, and the idea had been to, to just approach it in a completely different way. Well, I don't know what it means. I didn't know we had called it a 21st okay, century sorry, album. So well, no, else. I mean, maybe someone okay. else did. But it's, it's curious in a way because I see this as a very retro album. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the, the playing, it's not the playing, but the musical inferences are quite often ideas that we had maybe as far back as the 60s or the 70s. And I hear those coming up in the... In the um, just in the material. There, there are sort of musical references to the past. The other thing that is very um, old-fashioned about it is the, the structure of it is very geared to a, a vinyl album. The, the lengths of the pieces are almost as used to be dictated by the amount of music you could fit on one side of a record. And uh, we're well aware that a lot of people are going to stream it or download it or whatever, or buy the CD. But we rather like this this structure of uh, this old-fashioned structure. Mm. Well, I think uh, most of our music comes about in the studio. Um, it it has a, almost has a life of its own that we don't necessarily plan what's going to happen well in advance. But it takes 
it's more organic, that it takes shape as, as we go along. And so I don't think in, um, you know, in 1994 that we thought that this would necessarily be these four different sections. It, it wasn't like that. It was just these were pieces of music. It then appeared that they fitted together in, in, a, in this particular fashion, in this particular way. Um, uh, so I think that's how it came about. Yes, I think it probably has, uh, although I suspect that each album has, uh, were maybe interested in some different aspect of it, uh, whether it's, um, I don't think we deliberately set out to be innovative or do something different. It's just that that's where the interest lies. So when you're actually recording, you're saying, well, why don't we try this or why don't we try that? I think, to, uh, quite honestly, to go into the studios and to try and be different is is uh, not particularly helpful and is not not particularly creative. Uh, well, it, it sort of comes back to what I was saying. It wasn't on purpose. That's just how it turned yes. out. Um, and uh, it's unusual, and I think perhaps we we did worry a little bit about whether we should have had more songs on the album. But it then seemed entirely wrong to try and force music that appeared to work perfectly well on its own into having to have lyrics. Uh, there are no rules in, in uh, music. Uh, one should be allowed to do exactly as, as we like. And it just felt that this was the right, the right structure. <laughs> no, it's fatal. Never think about the, <laughs> what the audience might like to hear. I, I, think, all our, I think virtually all musicians uh, work on the same basis, which is that you have to make the music that pleases you. You have to be the arbiter of, of uh, taste. You cannot second guess what your fans will like or the public will like. It, it's, a, uh, it's not the way to go. It, it never works.